In this presentation we're going to look at how to implement the Monty Hall problem or how to analyze the Monty Hall problem with simple enough uh, numeric Python so NumPy stuff so and we're going to try and keep it as simple as possible as well there are probably a few more elaborate ways of doing it uh, uh, doing it that they're sort of slicker than the way I'm going to present but I'm going to sort of try and stick to the uh, a core set of simple uh, commands and functions so what is this? So we have three doors there and so behind two of the doors is a goat and behind one of the other doors, the last door, is a, a car. So what the contestant does is he picks a door. So let's say for argument's sake I, I pick three, okay, and then Monty Hall will come on and say, well he will open one of the other doors so I've picked three so he might let's say he might open uh, door one and I am given the option of sticking with three and I've just been shown a goat in door one okay so I've an option to stick with three or to switch to two okay and this is the crux of the Monty Hall problem it's a sort of famous enough probability problem okay now so that's the uh, so be the that's a bit of discussion about it. It's an old TV show called Let's Make a Deal. Okay, behind the uh, behind one of the doors is a car. Behind the other two is a goat. Uh, Monty Hall knows where everything is as well. That's important to point out. So the contestant selects a door, but the outcome is not immediately evident. We're given this stick or switch situation. Okay, so yeah, exactly as I picked it out there. Sorry. So I've picked out three. Monty is after opening door one there, and I'm think. Then he says, you, "You can stick with three, or you can switch to two. Okay. So that's the the, uh, the question in a nutshell there. So stick or switch. After Monty has shown a, a go behind the door that he opens, he, you know, you're given the chance to stick or switch. So what is the probability of winning the car if he or she stays with her first choice? And what if she decides to switch? This is the contestant now, the female person in this context. So, what's the probability of sticking, switching? Now, this was asked uh, to somebody, uh, a lady called Marilyn Voss Savant. Uh, this is a magazine called Prade Magazine, and I think it was um, in the early 90s. And somebody asked her this question, a guy from uh, Maryland uh, said, suppose you're on a game show and you're given a choice of three doors. Behind one door is a car, behind the other two goats. You pick a door, say number one, and the host, who knows that's what's behind the door, opens another door, say three. So it's just uh, in reverse of what I said. Do you want to pick door two? Is it your, to your advantage to switch your choice of doors? That last line there is very important. That is the crux of the question, this whole problem. Is it to your advantage to switch your choice of doors? Okay. Is it a good idea to switch to the other choice? Let's just say, go back here a second. Is it a good idea to switch in this context? So, is it a good idea to, is it to your advantage to switch to door two? So that's the crux of this. Now, what did she say, Marilyn Voss? Oh, so, okay, let's just start. Is it, sorry, that's, is it to your advantage to switch your choice of doors? Let's just say switch. Three possible answers, yes, switch door, no, stick with your original choice, and the last choice is, doesn't matter either way, it's a 50-50. Okay, so those are the three possible doors. Now, I'm not going to sort of, uh, we're sort of going to concentrate on some of those answers. Those, those are the three possible outcomes of that question. So, what did she say? Uh, I'll just read this out, this is from that website. Yes, you should switch. The first door has a one-third chance of winning, but the second door has a two-thirds chance of winning. Here's a good way to visualize what happens. Okay, I, well, I, essentially, I, I, I want to, just for the sake of brevity, I'll keep going. But essentially says, she uh, went for, back here, she said, yes, switch doors. Now, that was her choice, that's what she said there, yes, switch doors, okay. Now, that was the end of that, except a load of people wrote in and sort of said, hey, you're wrong, it's actually door, or it, actually, it doesn't matter. So, uh, many of the readers of Voss Savin's column refused to believe switching was beneficial despite her explanation. And a thousand of them had PhDs, no, no less. Uh, 
let's read some letters. I, 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 I'll tell you what. I'm uh, gonna. I'm gonna. This is a sort of presentation I gave it live, but I'm just gonna sort of cut out cut some of the answers. I'll just cut, read a couple of the funny ones. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, I know. Well, bit, bit in a nutshell. Condescending. Okay, so lots of really uh, sort of snarky letters to her, and she. Uh, one here, uh, maybe women look at Matt's problems differently to men. Okay, and so on. Okay, here's a funny one. You made a mistake. Let's look at the positive side. If all those PhDs are wrong, this country would be in serious trouble. Everett Harmon, PhD, U.S. Army Institute. And there is. Uh, I'll tell you. I'm gonna just cut to the chase. So, double face Pam. It turns out she was right. Now, I sort of have this implemented with ours uh, in the rest of this presentation. What I'm going to do actually is to uh, try and implement it with Python. So let's uh, switch to Python here now. And here we have the Monty Hall problem. Sorry, just, uh, I've got the wrong page up. There we go. So first off, what I'm going to do is actually demonstrate some set theory operations. Basically, three important set theory operations. There is union. So, okay, first off, import NumPy. I'm going to use NumPy as MP. And the first thing I'm going to do is do a set theory operation where I'm going to do union. There's also intersection and set difference. So essentially, I'm just going to have a quick revision of those three commands there. So, the, so we have two little sets here, arrays. Minus one, zero, and one, that's the first one, and minus two, zero, and two. You notice that zero is common to both. Essentially what this does is, for those two sets, it would give the union set, which is the five unique elements. And the command here is np for numpy union 1d, one dimensional, okay? You can also have the intersection, okay? intersect 1d so here we have two arrays there and the intersection will bring, uh, give a, uh, the unique uh, uh, values that are in common to both sets so we have 1 3 4 and 3 and 3 1 2 1 and you can see down here the answer is 1 and 3 the unique values there uh, but also that are in both uh, sets uh, there's also one more. There is set difference, and that is the elements. Here I have two sets here, A and B. And A is 1, 2, 3, 2, 4, 1. And B is 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. The set difference of A and A, 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 A B is the elements are, that are in A but not in B. Okay. So uh, you notice there that in B we have 3 and 4, uh, and they're also in A. So what set difference does is it gives the values here, the numbers here, that are in set A only but not in B. That's handy for set difference. The reason we would sort of use that is because it's quite useful for getting the complement. Okay, set difference is how you might sort of generate the complement of a set. It, supposing the other one was the um, universal set. Uh, to tell you what, a bit of uh, set theory stuff would come in really handy there. A bit of uh, revision of the um, underlying theory of sets. I'm going to do the set theory of B and A, B from A. So this is the values that are in B only. Let's give it a second. Oh, there, and essentially the values that are in B only and not in A. I, I think I actually have, have to just run this one again actually up here, just uh, just kickstart that up again. Now, just give it a second there, there we go. Let's go scroll back down there. So the set difference of B and A is the values that are in B but not in A, and that is 5 and 6. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, let's use this for the Monty Hall problem. Okay, I'm going to sort of break this um, presentation up into two because I'm going to come up to the 10 minute mark. So we have three doors and we'll set that up as a little set. Okay, and so one, two, three. Okay, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick a, uh, choose a door at random. I'm going to choose one door at random. Okay, 
from doors. So choice, pick one choice, pick one uh, value from doors. Doors is a set up here, one, two, three, is the name of the doors. And what I'm gonna do is pick one at random, and that's gonna be the correct door. That's the door that the um car is going to be behind. Now, I'm breaking this up into small pieces. I'm gonna do something very similar. You can actually it's actually uh, very much possible to do this with much faster code, but it's just to explain my rationale a bit better. If you once you get good at this, you can actually really cut it down. The second thing we have to do is uh the what door the um person chooses, okay? contestant chooses so he ch uh, chooses a door uh, randomly from the three doors so he picks one door from the three doors so in this case as we have it here what has happened here is that door one is the correct door but what happened here is that the contestant has chosen door three okay so I'll tell you what I am going to sort of pause it there and just start up a part two of this.